Welcome to The Sarah Scoop Show. It's time to get the scoop with Sarah. My name's Kyle Howard. I'm an actor. I've been at it since I was just a little guy. So, um, you know, people know me from all those shows that keep getting canceled. Uh, um, and uh, now I'm a full-blown grown-up and I'm still, I'm still doing this crazy job as, uh, as a profession. <laughs> So it's called Upside Down Magic, and it's about a bunch of magical kids that get accepted to this magical school called the Sage Academy. And of course, they think they're going there to get better at magic, but a few of them get there, and on the first day, they find out that they're actually delegated to the Upside Down Magic classroom, which basically means that their magic is broken and they're a danger to the world. And they, in fact, have come to this school to learn about English and math and spelling and reading and other normal school kids stuff and forget about their magic altogether. Um, so needless to say, they're all super bummed out about that because all they want to do is magic. Uh, but then there are a few twists and turns and it turns out they get to do some, some magic along the way. So I play uh, Professor Scriff, who is the, the upside down magic kids teacher. And I also happen to be um, like the groundskeeper at the school and the handyman. And I have all these odd jobs. And, and when you meet me at the beginning of the movie, I'm just this kind of like angry, bent out of shape, really uh, rough around the edges, dude. And I'm not very nice to the kids at all and they're all super turned off by me. But as time goes on, we end up learning that the reason that I'm a professor at the school and the reason that I'm the upside down magic professor is because I also have upside down broken magic. Uh, so the kids and I end up bonding over that um, and uh, you know, kind of experiencing the rest of the movie together. It's really sweet. Gosh, I would say probably more than other roles I've had, this character is super different from me. I, I feel like most people I end up playing are a little bit more like myself and I guess a little bit more quote unquote normal, if I can consider myself normal at all. But this guy is really, really out there. Though he does end up having such a sweet bond with the kids and it ends up being like this very lovely relationship that they all share. Um, so that part was relatable to me and, and also easy to play because I got to know the kids so well during the movie and they're all so great and we all just became buddies and bonded. And so that whole bond that we shared on screen really came from a real place too, which was nice. I had a blast with it. You know, in my experience, like those, those type of characters, like I said, that I, that I find to be quite different from myself, going into it, it always is a little scarier um, and a little bit more of an unknown and a, a little bit, it kind of feels less safe in a way than just going into either a character that I feel like I've played a million times or a character that I feel is just kind of an extension of myself. You don't have the same kind of anxiety and nervousness you know, kind of discovering the character and, and going to work the first day. And so with this one, because he is so out there, I did have a little bit of that anxiety around, you know, really finding the character and, and honing it. The nice thing was we got to Vancouver a couple of weeks before we started shootings and we rehearsed. The kids and myself and everybody else in the movie, we all got a really nice amount of rehearsal time. So that really helped with finding this, you know, really kooky guy that I ended up playing. And, and, then, and then the reward of it kind of ends up being uh, so much more fun to, to dive into something like that and to, to get to play make-believe all day as someone that's completely different from yourself. That's, you know, it's kind of what we're all in it for. Yeah, it's a little bit, it's a little bit scary kind of jumping off that cliff and trusting.
but then, like I said, the, the reward is kind of that much greater at the end of the day too, if it works, I guess. <laughs> I don't think I did, but that's so interesting that you say that because we all just got to see the movie for the first time, uh, like in the last couple of weeks. And one of the kids in the movie, he plays Andres, this kid, Max, his dad texted me after he saw the movie and he said the exact same thing. He was like, dude, I'm getting like a Chris Lloyd in Back to the Future vibe. And it hadn't occurred to me at all, uh, but I totally took it as a compliment. And he actually said that to me before I had seen the movie myself. So then I kind of watched it with that in mind. And um, I mean, I don't know if I could ever uh, compare myself to the brilliance of Christopher Lloyd in Back to the Future. But um, yeah, that's so funny that you, that you said that because he, he said that too. I didn't go into it um, with anybody in particular in mind as um, a sort of model for this, for this character. I, you know, he's just such a... He's such a wacky dude. It was just kind of a conglomeration of craziness. Yeah, it was a, it was a really, it was a super fun audition, actually. Um, kind of like I was describing with uh, that idea of playing somebody that's different from yourself. I remember the day I read for it and I had this, I had this sort of conversation with myself of like, okay, this character is so kind of wild that I for sure can't go like halfway with it. If I'm gonna, if I'm gonna go, I gotta go like 110%. So I picked out this crazy outfit um, for the thing. At the time, the character was also, there were, there were quite a few things in the movie that were different. And originally, when I picked up the kids to take them to the school, I picked them up in a boat. And we had this whole like, um, adventure on this like river that led to the, the academy. Um, and that, that ended up going away from the movie. But there was this whole like kind of nautical vibe to the thing. So I wore this outrageous outfit and this tie with anchors on it. And I had like, really wild hair much like I do in the movie and um yeah it was it was a really it was a really fun audition actually Joe our director uh was there the day that I read and he had great notes for me and he was like a cool insight into what the what the kids characters were going to end up being and we just kind of we just kind of played with it and and like I said it ended up being a lot of fun and they taped it and I didn't hear anything for weeks i actually went and did another movie and i kind of forgot about it and then like i think probably like a month and a half later it came back around and and then it happened very quickly and i and i left canada and started on it um but yeah it was an interesting audition process for sure I, and I wasn't, I wasn't aware of the series before I read the script, but, but I did become, I, I, think, I think I wasn't aware of the book series when I, when I read it, but then when I got the job, I found out that it was based on books. And, and uh, so yeah, I read the first couple stories because there's like seven or eight books now. Um, it's a pretty long series. And I read the first couple and my niece and nephew read them too. And, and then I realized that there were some departures from the story in the books. To, to what we ended up doing in the movie. Uh, just because, you know, the, the mediums are different and, and telling a, a story in film is different than telling a story in books. So, so certain things had to change. But um, I, think, I think the like, sweetest parts of the story and the, the real message of the story stayed intact and is, is still present in the, in the movie version, which is nice because it's a, it's a really sweet and lovely message. No, I think there's certainly a chance. You know, I think it all depends on how successful the movie is for Disney. And, um, you know, they, they are known to pump out sequels when they have something that really hits. Uh, so I, I don't think this would be an exception to that. And, you know, there's lots of places to go with the story from here on out. And in fact, there's even a little bit of a cliffhanger at the end of the movie that totally leaves it open to do more if, if it came to that. So... Oh, you know, it's anyone's guess. Uh, 
what the chances are of that happening and fingers crossed that the movie is super successful and, and they end up wanting to go that direction. But at this point, I guess it's too early to tell. I had been there a couple times just on, on short jobs. Uh, I had never, I'd never been there on a movie before. So I'd never been there for such an extended period of time. Um, and it was, it was so great. I was already fond of the city from the other times that I had spent there. This trip was special because we actually shot half the movie in Vancouver and then we shot the other half on Vancouver Island. Um, that's where the, the school that we used for the Sage Academy was. And it's this incredible school on a lake in the middle of the woods and just a lot of the, a lot of the places that the script called for were like magical forests and uh, just really epic, epic locations. So that part was a real treat. I hadn't spent time on the island before um, and we were over there for at least a few weeks. And I, I had a few days off to have some adventures on my own and play some golf and go mountain biking and go surfing. And um, so that was, yeah, it, it was all a real treat. And, and even our time back in the city um, back in Vancouver was, was also great. It's, it's just a great town. It was, it was the thing for sure that I was most impressed by, um, being a part of the movie. Um, I, I mean, I thought the script was great when I read it. It's it, like I said, it's just such a sweet story with a really nice message in it. Uh, as soon as I met all the kids, I just instantly fell for all of them and was totally on board with everything they were doing. They, they were all just hilarious. And, but the, the locations that they found and the sets that they built too was kind of the most unexpected thing that I was just blown away by. Some of the, some of the forests that we filmed in were just mind blowingly magical. I mean, they didn't look real. They looked like they were sets, but these are just these crazy enchanted forests that exist in Vancouver and on, and on the island. And then the sets that they built as well. The classroom that the UDMs go to school in, in particular, is one of the, one of the greatest built sets that I've ever seen on anything that I've done. Um, it's just that it's, it's meant to be underground. Um, so when, when the kids first come into it, they walk through the forest to this hole in the, in the ground, and then they go down a spiral staircase into this like basement layer that is like, you know, it's got roots growing down the walls and water pipes running through it. And it's just, it's in a really amazing set. So yeah, I, I was super impressed by that. And like I said, the, the school that they found to be the Sage Academy is also just stunning and just really like fits exactly what's written on the page in the script. We had so many, these kids are such characters and I mean, they're just all hilarious. Um, Ellie, the kid that plays Elliot in the movie, just like was cracking me up nonstop. He just like doesn't stop singing and rapping and telling jokes. And he was making up rap songs about all of our characters every day, which was hilarious. They were just constant entertainment. And I mean, I think that was like kind of the highlight of the whole movie for me was to kind of see that experience through their eyes because I've I've been doing this since I was a kid too and I remember being their age and getting my first big job and being on a real movie set with like you know adults that had been in the business forever and like you know a crew that I really respected and looked up to and it was really cool for me after doing this for so long to kind of have that nostalgic moment of getting to just see an experience like that through fresh eyes again. And it was just kind of refreshing and inspiring. And uh, just for me, it kind of made the whole experience. Yeah, you know, it's kind of my first experience in, in the Disney world, I guess. Um, and it was great. Like you said, the, you know, 
they they have a, a pretty strong reputation of touching things and turning them to gold. So I hope this is no exception to that. Um, I think the movie turned out really fantastic and I hope that it's super successful for, for them. Um, it's it's really funny. They're They're so prepared for everything they do to be a big hit that, you know, we had to do a lot of stuff when we were on set, our last few days at work, there was a whole separate crew there that um, was like taking all of these 3D images of us. And we kind of like didn't know what we were doing at first. And then we found out later that um, this was for the action figures. If, like, if the movie's a big hit and they want to like make dolls and action figures of all the, all the characters. Uh, so that was a trip to be a part of that. I've never done that on anything I've done in the past. Um, and then we got, uh, actually just in the last few weeks, we got um, samples of like the video game they're making to, there, there's going to be like an app that has an upside down magic game attached to it. And so we got to see the renderings of all of our characters for that. And um, yeah, it's it's wild being a part of, that whole process, like I said, they're so prepared um, going into things for the movie to be a big hit. They just, they've already got the video games and the action figures ready to go. You know, I just finished an indie movie right before the pandemic started. I think we finished filming like three or four days before everything shut down. It's called Val. It's kind of like a comedy horror movie for uh, a group of folks that I did another movie for a few years ago called Electric Love. So I don't know specifically when it comes out. It's obviously been a pretty wild few months here. And since then, I've been doing absolutely nothing. Just, you know, kind of patiently waiting for the business to get back on its feet again and for everybody to get back to work. Yeah, that, I mean, that's the next thing I have coming out, but I don't know specifically when it'll actually be finished and ready to go. Thank you for watching The Sarah Scoop Show. Head to sarahscoop.com for more.